This next set of videos is all about data and organizing data and interpreting data. And the most basic way to do that is to present data visually. So we're going to quickly answer the question, how can data be presented visually? And there's lots of ways to present data visually. We're just going to talk about a few of these. The first one is with a frequency table. And also going with that are bar graphs and histograms. And there is some difference between bar graphs and histograms, but that's beyond the scope of this course. So we're not going to worry too much about it here. Let's say, for example, uh, a teacher gives a 10-question test and records the scores students earn on a 10-question test. And those scores are 7, 8, 6, 9, 7, 8, 10, 9, 8, 7, 7, 6, 8, 9, 10, 8, and 7. If we want to make a frequency table to summarize this information, what a frequency table does is just what it says, list the frequency or how often each outcome occurs or the frequency of each outcome. So for example, we've got some scores on tests. And we'll use f to represent the frequency. Looking at this list of numbers, the smallest score is 6. There's some 7s, there's some 8s, there's some 9s, and there's some 10s. And if I count them off, the 6 occurs 1, 2 times. So the frequency for 6 is 2. The 7 occurs 1, 2, 3, for five times, so the frequency of seven is five. The eight occurs one, two, three, four, five times as well. The nine occurs one, two, three times. And the 10 occurs one, two times. And it looks like I've covered all the numbers there. So this would be my frequency table that shows me how often each score occurred. But sometimes it's hard to really get a visual of what that frequency table is telling us. So that leads directly into what we're going to call the bar graph, or possibly call the histogram depending on the context and how we use it. And what a bar graph or histogram does is it has a vertical bar for the frequency of each outcome. So for example, Our outcomes were 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And then vertically would be the frequency. Maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And since score number 6 occurred twice, it's going to have a height of 2. Score number 7 occurred 5 times, so it'll have a height of 5. Score number 8 also occurred 5 times, so it also has a height of 5. 
Score number nine occurred three times, and so its bar has a height of three. And score 10 occurred two times, and so it has a height of two. And in this way, we end up with a nice little bar graph that visually shows what's in that frequency table up above. Now I can see people are kind of clustered around 7 and 8, a few scoring higher and a few scoring lower. And I can get a better idea of the distribution of the scores. Now let's look at another example, though, where we make a bar graph. But instead of the bar graph representing frequencies, we can also write it to represent percents. Let's say we do a survey of the number of miles run by several runners on a given day. And they're going to run maybe one, two, three, or four miles. And the x-axis represents those miles. The y-axis is going to represent the percent that responded a certain way, so 10%. 20%, 30%, and 40%. And what we'll see is the 1 was run by 20% of the respondents. 2 miles was run by 30% of the respondents. 3 miles was run by 40% of the respondents. And 4 miles was run by 10% of the respondents. Now, as I interpret this, I have to be careful to remember that those numbers represent the percentage. Let's say of 250 runners, how many ran more than two miles? Well, more than two miles would be the bar with three combined with the bar with four. Notice the bar with three went up to 40%. In addition to that, the bar with four went up to 10%. And so it turns out 50% ran more than two miles. But that doesn't answer the question, because the question wants to know how many actually ran more than two miles. And so to get the percent, we just take the total 250 times the percent, always written as a decimal of 0.5. And when we multiply, we get 125 runners that actually ran more than two miles. And while occasionally we show percents in histograms or bar graphs, it's probably more common to see percents actually drawn visually in another type of chart called a pie chart. A pie chart shows percentages in each category. So for example, this exact same miles run as a bar chart could be represented as a pie chart. A pie chart is just a circle where we split up a percentage of the circle based on the percent that fall in that category. So for example, 20%, we said, ran one mile. 30% ran 2 miles. 40% ran 3 miles. And 10% ran 4 miles. And so I can see on this pie chart exactly kind of how the different ones compare with each other proportionately, or how big of a chunk out of the whole each one represents. And then we can answer questions such as, of the 250 runners, how many ran two miles? Well, two miles is this chunk on the top left. 
and that's 30%. So we want 30% or 0.3 of the runners, 250 runners. And when we multiply there, we end up with 75 runners actually ran two miles. So this was a short and quick introduction to graphs to represent data visually. It's probably the least mathematically rigorous of the different ways we can display data visually. But it's important we know how to interpret frequency tables, bar graphs, histograms, and pie charts. So take a look at the homework assignment to try a few of these. Let me know if you have any questions. And in the next video, we'll take a look at a more numeric way to summarize and represent data.